<laughs> All right, describe the functional perspective of sociology. Give an example that pertains to this perspective. Hey, within your response, detail, manifest, latent, and dysfunctional content. There we go. There you go. So your kind of homework was to come up with an idea to apply to this. So you weren't maybe uh, surprised by the bell ringer. So there we go. Dude, I didn't know. Did you watch it? Wasn't it the Royal Rumble? Do you know who won? Nope. Well, maybe they're blurting out who won. Maybe they're that excited. <laughs> no, I didn't watch it. I wanted to.
All right, so what do we have here? The functional perspective of sociology. What do we got? Raven, go ahead. Uh, I can yeah good job good job so these are structures within our society that help shape with interaction okay helps shape our uh, really the workings of our society so these structures these functions are important to make sure that we have a stable society and we talked about a few functions a few institutions that are essential for societal makeup. And what was that? What did we what did we talk about? What are some examples of some of these institutions? What do we got? Kaya, you said one yesterday. Oh, school. School, yeah, education. Good job. So education is very important, obviously, preparing the youth for their career paths, okay, their future. And uh, also there's a lot of latent function for that. Okay, so we talked about manifest and latent function yesterday and how manifest is the objective, the clear conscious goal we're trying to achieve. And with education, obviously, to prepare students for the future. What might be a latent function of education? We used this example yesterday. What's a latent function of education that is beneficial? What did we talk about? Hey, Claire, remember? A latent function of education? Yeah, exactly. Yep, relationships. Okay, building positive relationships with people, forming groups, maybe uh, being a part of extracurricular activities that are very beneficial for uh, people and their experience and benefit uh, their, their future. All right, good, good. And we also talked about the dysfunctional content within education, this institution. And what was the dysfunctional content that we mentioned? Adley, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we talked about bullying yesterday, okay, and how it's unfortunate, but as you're bringing people together, okay, unfortunately, we'll see these types of dysfunctions in this institution. All right, good, good. And there are many different examples yesterday that we talked about with the functional perspective and key sociologists and how they believe that these institutions are essential and needed to benefit society. Without these institutions like education, like religion, like family, chances are our society would kind of fall apart. And there's many other institutions that you could have mentioned. And uh, what did uh, you come up with? Raven, what example did you come up with? Um, I, no, I still use education, but I just okay. kind of what the latent and manifest is. Okay, go ahead. So I said that education could be used to help the job market and economy. Yeah, good, good. And uh, the latent content of that is that it's not really intentional but it can help build like relationships and um, like connections while moving moving through like the education system so it'll still improve the job market but it wasn't like you know going to school to get a job and like... right and then my the dysfunctional i said is that because um education system can be too expensive it could allow some people that they can't really afford it and so they may have unemployed or business. Awesome, good job. So you're saying your latent function is just uh, really helping out the job field, right? Yeah. You're saying this is gonna direct students, people to uh, maybe a certain career path, building those relationships where they can maybe find a job yeah. in a certain career that they may have never thought of before yeah. or may have uh, never had an opinion about before. Good, good job. And this function you said that this is because of the price of education, yeah. like let's say with, college or university, wherever you might go, uh, maybe it's a vocational school, the price alone might deter people away from that. Right. Okay, good, nice, good job, good job. Yeah, and that's obviously alarming, right? The cost of school, college, oh, it's, it's ridiculous. And uh, whether or not maybe we'll see changes to that, I don't know. Good job, Reed. Hadley, what do you have? What example did you use? Okay, so I did getting a pet. A pet? Yeah, it's Okay. Um, the manifest content is just like strong companions without having children. Wait, what's that? Without no. having children. Oh, okay. All right. So and you're kind of feeling that. Companion. Okay, good. The latent content would be it could be best to have health and have any negative results. All right. So you're saying protection, you're saying benefit of mental health. Okay. But the dysfunctional would be. 
Yeah. You always can get another one. You always can get another one, right? Okay, good, good. All right, yeah, good, good. Okay, so we'll talk about the symbolic interaction theory today and how that kind of applies to that perspective even more, right? And applies to that idea where, you know, getting a dog or a pet might you know, just be very beneficial for the family. And maybe that's the institution you're trying to describe, family, right? You're describing family and how maybe adding a pet will benefit the family. And Leighton, you said, was uh, mental health, right? You talked about what else did you say? Protection. Yeah, especially the big dog, right? My dog, oh my gosh. Anybody that walks in, he's just excited to see. It's, it's yeah. not like he's trying to protect anybody. It's kind of funny. His functional content, I know when he takes a dump on a carpet every morning, that doesn't help anything out. Or when he chews up my carpet, or when he's making holes into my sofa, that, that kind of stinks. My couch. Ugh. It's not like he tries, he just like runs over it. Like, I don't know how to describe it. He's like a year, that's it. He's training, he's a good dog, great dog. Huh? He only does it every now and then. It's like when I'm taking too slow, when I'm going too slow in the morning. I'm almost like kind of walking down the steps, get a shower, come out. There he is. He's like, I can't hold him anymore. <laughs> so I feel bad for him. So maybe it's more on me than anything, but I don't know. It's kind of funny. What kind of He's a mini golden doodle. Oh my God, that means exactly that. But he's black. So, yeah, yeah he, he's a good dog. The only thing, he, he gets really excited. He has the tinkles when he gets really excited. I don't know how to train that. I really don't. I don't want to hit my dog and be excited to see me. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things like, uh, I don't know how to I don't have some sort of reinforcement for you to not to pee. Oh, yeah, on the door, huh? Oh, on the steps. Yeah, because I have like a bylaw for so like the door to be outside of the Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, he's kind of scheduled, so I mean, we know when he really has to go to the bathroom, but we just can't stop him when he's excited. He's like a sprinkler. Allison, what do you got? Um, I said the government provides education for the children, which that in turn pays for the school. Okay. Yeah, okay, good job. Good job. And raise their families with confidence. And my intention would be to just become law-abiding with that family. And the dysfunction would be that if all this is so well, then the parts of the system would have to readapt and recapture new order. All right, good, good. So you're talking about how government maybe supplies public services for the people. Okay, good. And uh, your lady function is just describing how this is going to help children apply to the well, younger generations to apply to this system and uh and to keep this system going right all right good and your dysfunction was what again um, if it doesn't go well, they have to have all right so they have to evolve this practice this institution okay good good all right katie what do you have um, oh okay it, it pretty much we hit on it already all right no dude Okay. All right. Cam, what do you have? Sports. Sports. Okay, go ahead. Good. Awesome. So the disciplines that you acquire over, you know, practice, being a part of a group, being a part of a team, and uh, some of those principles, those goals that you're trying to achieve so that you can maybe apply it to prepare for your future for other goals and outcomes that you're looking for. Okay, good. Awesome. Yeah, good job. Good job. So sports, entertainment, definitely huge in our society and our culture. And that's something that, uh, yeah, we can definitely apply that to. Good job. Kayla? Okay, so you're just talking about family structure then, right? So, yeah, you can maybe apply how 
uh, maybe more influence in the kid's life will be better, you know, for that, that child to grow and expand and see more career paths and have a better, brighter future. All right, good. And then latent functional, what was that again? Yeah, okay, good, good. And then dysfunction? Um, okay, okay, good. Kelsey, what do you have? I put working out as an event as would be like shape, dysfunction, like that creates sore muscles and tenderness in the joint. I have a tendon for other activities, so it's more of a person with it. All right, so exercise. Mm -hmm. yeah, Hell, good. What do you got, Haley? I put staying up late and making the time for things. Mm -hmm. In fact, Yeah, all right. So here you are trying to do the best and complete that assignment, but it might have a lot of drawbacks for you know the next day. So here you are staying up late again. Okay. Lack of sleep might cause some more issues for you. Go ahead, Brittany. What do you got? Working. Working. Okay. So, so career. Good. The last one could be, but it was pretty much that you wouldn't have time for anything else in your life, and then the dysfunctional was just like you and your you make yourself sad. All right, so uh, your latent function might be uh, you you're you're building connections and building relationships with people that you do work with. Okay, so uh, this is over broadening your experience. Okay, your interaction with people. And then dysfunctionally, you said what? You don't have time. Okay. Eliminating your 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 fun time, your social life, right? Okay. Guy, what do you got? I said religion. Okay, so people that might have differences in viewpoint or, you know, types of religion. Okay, good. Good. Ailey, what do you have? Religion. Were yours the same manifest later? Um, for latent, I put, it could be like, um, getting through grade school and getting into Yeah. For I waking up early. Waking up early. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Good, good. All right, good job with that, guys. So remember, think of institutions, though. Think of like family, religion, education, career, okay, whatever it might be, uh, and how these structures all work together to fit in our society and how the social interaction occurs within these institutions. So with, obviously, manifest, this is the objective. This is the goal, the conscious effort. Latent is this unconscious effort. This is something that's benefiting this outcome or maybe setting more outcomes that are beneficial, which you didn't think of at the moment. And then dysfunctional content is something that might be a drawback to this institution. And through time, okay, that's kind of what that picture I showed towards the end of class, this will correct itself, right? We'll look at these dysfunctions and we'll try to correct it. We'll try to move forward and try to expand to overall benefit society. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So terms for today, I wanna to finish these two other perspectives then I have an assignment here for you. Shouldn't take you long to complete. It's just really your opinion about the matter. So here are your terms for today. We got the conflicts perspective and, oh, Raven, there you go. There you go. And you don't have to worry about these guys here just because, I mean, we talked about them yesterday. And right? we talked about Com and how he's a father of sociology. Okay, and how he believe that studying society is important to understand, obviously, history, perspectives, reasons for certain events. We talk about Herbert Spencer. We mentioned about him and how these structures, these functions all fit in like the human body. Okay, we're, we, we need these, okay, these body parts, obviously, to live. Okay, it's a part of our body. Same with these institutions. Same with these structures, these functions in our society. We need education. We need religion. We need uh, you know, obviously a career to keep us moving in our society. All right, but we're going to finish up with these two perspectives here today. We're going to kind of mention both of them, and then we'll get you working on the assignment, which if 
I'm going to give you a little bit of time to work on the assignment tomorrow, okay? <clears throat> and I'm thinking of test here soon. I was planning for Friday, but I don't want to do it Monday, though. That's the thing. I don't like putting a test on Monday. I did not do that. Oh, yeah, that's right. So is it okay for Tuesday? Is it okay for a Tuesday test? You guys fine with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you guys can study, right? That's going to be awesome. And we have, like, not MCI. They can study. Then we have a full week, then you're off that following Monday yeah, after that. Yeah. Oh. Was it the 21st? I think. <laughs> March is going to be pretty cool though. We have the Batman movie coming out. Oh my God. States for Wrestling's coming. March Madness, NCA Wrestling. Then after that, you're pretty much building up for April. It's just the NFL draft. I think Doctor Strange 2 is coming out in April. <laughs> so, no, I know. This is why you like it. It's not weird. Come on now. All right, my dad moved and he found my old toys. To go oh, so you got to bring them in here. He said, get rid of these here. I'm like, uh, well, I kind of like them. But... No, because my girlfriend doesn't want them. Yeah. Don't throw them away. No, not throw them away. I have connection to them. Actually, I just, oh, this new Spider Man had Doc Ock and Spider Man. So I was like, perfect. They're both in the movie. So why can't I just put them in class? Yeah. No, they won't see the light. <laughs> okay. We got these terms down? No. <laughs> what? It wasn't working. Uh. Hey, who knows? We might have an ice storm here, so oh, tell yeah. Kale to get the uh, chains on the tires. <laughs> I need new tires. He gets no, all I fired up about snow and ice, from what you said. No, he does. For no reason. I'm like, it's not. We're okay. <laughs> We're a okay. You can calm down. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, hey, and it's one video I saw. Snow. Snow ever stopped him. <laughs> Snow ever stopped me. He cracks me up. No, well, it does stop him. <laughs> Stops him from having a good time. <laughs> I was and then I'm like, well, I can drive. He's like, no, you're not driving. I don't know. Yeah. It's His truck crazy. yet? Yeah, I don't want to drive. Is that a stick no, shift? Or not? No. No. He tried to. He said, forget about it. Well, no, he just never took me again. You oh, must have been grinding the gears then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they make these YouTube videos. Him and I are going to partner, I think, so we'll grow our uh, channels. All right, here we go. Here we go. So, social conflict theory. So, this is where society forms from constant conflict. From constant struggle, right? So this might be a war. This might be, let's say, a economic issue. So the working class rising up against the social elites, the business owners, right? Okay. And I'm sure you know many key sociologists that believe in this theory, like Karl Marx, okay? And how the working class needs to rise up to try to claim their benefit. Okay, we just can't allow these social elites to have full prosperity, have really the, uh, the benefits to society as a working class are struggling. And they're going through these hard conditions of labor. They're not getting full compensation for their, for their labor. Okay, maybe they're not getting any type of health insurance or 
okay, obviously problems with compensation. So social conflict theory is just believing and an understanding the idea of society is changing and adapting through this constant conflict, okay? So we're looking at conflict, we're looking at issues, okay, we might see an uprising like a rebellion or revolt, this changes, okay, we see social integration, we see uh, social programs forming, and uh, this is overall benefiting society. And this is constant, right? This is constantly like a wheel. This is constantly moving where we see this upheaval. We see this, you know, maybe problem in society and we rise up against it to try to face it and try to find solutions. It's a very progressive viewpoint of sociology, right? And that's important, right? There needs to be some sort of forms of progression within society, whether it's politics, whether it's the economy, right? Whether it's uh, maybe just social disputes, social issues. Haley, did you have your hand up? What's that? No, so I, I mean the arena, meaning like this is a constant. So this is almost view it as a gladiator match in a way, right? So these people are constantly looking to battle and form uh, new solutions to the inequality, to the issues, to the problems. Does that make sense? Right. Uh, this is constant battleground in a way where uh, the, let, let, let's say the lower class, middle class workers, okay, are constantly fighting up against the elite, these business owners. It's just a way to apply it to the bourgeoisie, the proletariat. It's a good example. And this constant upheaval, this constant fight. So key element, society is structured in ways to benefit a few at the expense of majority. So again, looking at the bourgeoisie, looking at the proletariat, this constant fight and struggle between the two and uh, how the working class individuals, which is example of the economy, is constantly trying to seek better compensation, better working hours, better benefits. And uh, this is a constant struggle. So when you're looking at the United States, okay, a good example would be that progressive era after the Industrial Revolution, well, while it's still occurring, and uh, moving up into World War I, many people were kicking back against the government. They're looking for better compensation. They're looking for better wages. They're looking for more protections in the workplace. And again, there's many movements, marches onto public and political um, affiliations, groups, to try to benefit their way, their perspective in society. And like I said, you can apply this to many different things, not just the economy, not just working class versus obviously the elite, the business owners. Okay, this applies to race, right? So you can talk about the civil rights movement and how many people look to try to fight for more rights and opportunities and benefits to society. The civil rights movement is a good example of this social conflict theory. And how we see benefit, we see expansion through reforms, through constant uh, conflict. All right, so two figures that you can really associate with this theory is Karl Marx. So like I mentioned before with the explanation of this theory is the social class, inequality of social conflict. So these inequalities that were placed on the lower class, working class individuals, and how they're trying to seek better compensation. Now they're trying to work up that social ladder a little bit more through more opportunities, through more benefits. And it's needed that the government would stand up against the elite. W.B. Du Bois, good example. We talk about Booker T. Washington. We talk about many civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King. And how through the United States, especially we can analyze this, more progressive movements were adapted. We tried to uh, try to solve some of the issues of the Jim Crow laws in the South, right? The lynching of many hate groups like the KKK and uh, trying to uh, progress African-Americans in society. So whether it's through entertainment, whether it's through different forms of advancement of political movements, okay, this is a constant struggle, constant conflict. And those are just examples that we can maybe hint to. Obviously, I'm sure you learned about many of these figures many of these events that occurred in history that you can apply this theory to. 
And that's kind of your goal for tomorrow then, your bell ringer, is to uh, think of maybe an example we can apply a social conflict theory to. All right, you guys good with that? Social conflict theory? Again, constant conflict, right? This is looking for the benefits of society through maybe movements, like progressive movement is a good example. Okay, maybe it's a racial issue. So W.B. Du Bois, you can mention Booker T. Washington, Martin Luther King, and uh, really how this conflict is a constant struggle, a constant movement for progressive advancement and more opportunities. The last theory, the last perspective is symbolic interaction. So conflict theories, micro, or sorry, macro. So we're looking at the large picture again. Same with the functionalist perspective, these institutions, this is more macro. We're looking at the larger picture and symbolic interaction is more micro. This is more individualistic. This is focusing on, let's say a person or maybe even a small group of people in their interaction in society. So we're looking at and analyzing uh, really just the interactions of people in society and how this really shapes our society as a whole. So we're making connections. We're making uh, really, I guess you say, associating with certain experiences that we face and applying it to our own society. So this is how these institutions are formed through constant experience, constant social exchange with one another, constant social interaction with one another is how these institutions form is how really we see the functional perspective becoming and emerging as a belief. How conflict occurs? Well, you need to have people interacting with one another, talking and discussing about some of these issues. So maybe you can even apply all these perspectives together and see how they may be formed and maybe all kind of like a chain link connect with one another. So society is nothing more than a shared reality that people construct as they interact with one another. So through this experience, through constant interaction, we make sense of society around us. We make sense of the world around us, and we can look for benefits of our society through this constant interaction, whether it's in a workplace, whether it's in education, okay, whether it is maybe with forms of entertainment, okay, especially now with social media, this is a great way with one another to interact with people all around the world, okay, whether it's viewpoints about politics, whether it's viewpoints about sports, entertainment. Okay, we have this constant interaction, which we never really seen before, uh, really before, obviously, social media came around. Obviously, radio is important, and I help out a lot, television, but through social media, we can overall look at this perspective and apply it even more than really we ever could. All right, so, so symbolic interaction is just looking how we experience and interact with one another and share these experiences to apply to our society. So kind of that sociological imagination in a way. All right, so here are important figures of this symbolic interaction, this micro level, this perspective, this theory of sociology. So Max Weber, understanding is setting from people in it. So again, looking at the experience, looking at how people interact with one another and form these connections, these groups to maybe build society in the right direction. So building more opportunities for people through this interaction. All right, George Herbert Mead described how we build personalities from social experience. And there's a lot of truth to that. I'm sure you maybe heard before, oh, you act like your brother, you act like your own friend. Since you've been hanging around this person, you're really picking up their traits, their personalities. And through this experience, through this interaction, we do kind of pick up these types of behaviors. There's a lot of truth to it. So this is describing, well, Mead's experience is describing how people's personalities are, 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 are placed through this experience and this interaction with one another. Goffman, we'll talk about him soon in yep, uh, probably chapter three. He describes that we're actually on a stage. We're constantly acting our way through life. That uh, we pick up these personalities, these characteristics on really just how we're portraying ourselves in our certain group. So here at school, we might not actually have these behaviors, these personalities, but we try to fit the mold of what a student is designed to be, right? In job status, right? In our career, we try to fit the mold of what we're supposed to be in that current job. Same with sports. We're trying to fit 
that certain aspects, these abilities on the field. Does that make sense? So dramaturgy is really just how we act our way through life. It's kind of weird to think about, but when you think, think about the experience, and obviously there, there's some truth to it. And finally, uh, George Holmes, Peter Blout, social exchange analysis. This is really just looking at how we exchange with one another, depending on our beliefs, our principles, and how our relationships, depending on the pros, the cons of that relationship, we might cut it off or continue, right? So what does this relationship with this one person mean to me, right? Am I getting love and affection from this person? Am I getting some sort of benefit that will help me rise in a career path? So we'll keep that relationship. Or maybe this person's making me depressed. Maybe this person's not a great friend. Or maybe they're regressing me. So that's a way to analyze through the social exchange. All right, here we go, guys. Have a good one. Take care. I will, I will uh, have that assignment ready for you at the start of class tomorrow. We'll just work on that then. Cheers. Have a good one. Take care.